The meeting is now in order. Uh, Ms. Good, could you lead us in the uh, pledge to the flag, please? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chancellor Head, has the uh, meeting notice been posted? Yes, I certify it was posted in accordance with the law. Thank you, sir. Are there any introductions tonight? Yes. So this is a special announcement first. We're going to reverse the order a little bit. Uh, we've got one or two sabbatical members that are hung up in traffic. So, um, Rich, you just have to wait. And uh, <laughs> uh, two things. One is I want to recognize, we, in the last six months, we've had three people recognized in the Houston metropolitan area. We had uh, Mariel Castillo recognized as one of the 40, uh, age 40, under 40 outstanding individuals. We've had Linda Head recognized as one of the 50 most influential women. And now we, this today, we were notified that Jennifer Olenek, our new CFO, was recognized as one of the 40 outstanding under 40 by the Houston Business Journal. So congratulations. <laughs> I, th I think you know we've got some very talented and hardworking people here. So. Okay, we're going to, uh, next is two of my favorite people are here, Kathy Adam and Gary Clark. Gary is, um, well, they, she's a photographer and he's a writer and he's a faculty member. He used to be the VP, at, uh, he worked with me over at North Harris. And actually you taught adjunct way back when, right? Kathy, oh. you still do. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Piney Woods Wildlife Society or something. I remember that, too. So you all have the book. Um, their two latest books, by the way, I gave them as gifts um, yeah. for uh, Christmas. So I asked them to come over and talk a little bit about what they do. And, and by the way, he has an article every Saturday in the Houston Chronicle. I get it online, but there's a nice article in there. And sometimes it's accompanied by a picture from Kathy. So if you want to come up and... Well, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for allowing us to come and speak with you for a few minutes. Uh, of course, we could talk for all evening, but <laughs> we will try to be brief. I uh, want to talk to you about the books that you have and how they came about uh, briefly. The Book of Texas Birds, Texas A&M University Press, uh, approached me about seven years ago and asked me to do a book on Texas birds. Gulp. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this peer-reviewed book, of course, Gulp. Uh, I have spent a lifetime studying the birds of Texas, and I have studied birds throughout the entire state, every region of the state, every, pretty much every county of the state. And I'll tell you why that's important a little bit later. Uh, nonetheless, I've, I took careful notes all those years, and when it was time to write the book, it was a matter of collecting those notes in some kind of organized fashion and putting everything that I had learned down on paper. That was seven years ago. It took about five years to write the book. I was serving as a dean during that time and vice president under Dr. Head, and as you know, if you serve as vice president under Head, you don't have a lot of time, <laughs> which is great. So, so I was working on it uh, late at night and also on the summer vacations. It was a joy to do, and we're very proud that it came out finally. Let's see, how do I advance this? Do I advance this, or do you advance it? <laughs> Just so we're clear about this, I did not realize I was keeping you from doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I never told you. <laughs> Shall I uh, advance this or will you advance it? There we go. Okay. So mockingbirds that we take for granted. Of course, it's a state bird. I know a lot about the bird. I could spend another evening talking about that bird. But I want to tell a couple of stories. One is about the brown jay, which is actually a rare bird for Texas. It started appearing in Texas in the late 1970s, early 1980s. I first saw it with a lifelong friend down there named Father Tom Pincelli. And we were, uh, oh, we were kind of on our bellies and, and legs and crawling around the forest along the Rio Grande, which you can't do anymore without getting caught by the Border Patrol, but you could do it back then. 
And Father Tom had uh, brand new equipment, brand new optical equipment. You know, we burglars carry around expensive optical equipment. And he had, he had brand new optical equipment that his parents had bought him. Well, he, um, as we charged through the forest trying to see this bird that we had heard calling, he tripped and fell over a log. And he, his equipment just went flying on the ground. And Father Tom, he lifelong friend of mine, Father Tom looked up at me and he said, now I'm not going to repeat exactly the word he said, but it went blankety blank. <laughs> and then I looked at him and he looked at me and his eyes were that big and the blood was drained out of his face. He's a priest. <laughs> and I said, Father Tom, he's your boss. <laughs> Or maybe it's the Kalima warbler. This is a bird that only breeds in Texas, nowhere else, only in Texas. At winters in the uh, uh, Kalima Mountains of Mexico, it comes up to Texas to breed, but it only breeds in the high mountains, in the high Chisos Mountains of Big Bend National Park, and now Fort Davis. I'm not Fort Davis, but Davis Mountains. But that's the only place you can see it, in the high Chisos Mountains of Big Bend. So one day in the late 1970s, I trudged up that mountain into a, a little canyon where that bird, the only place that bird breeds is up. And as I walked down that canyon, this is early in the morning, by the way, as I walked down that canyon, lining the trail of the canyon, were these guys in dark clothes and sunglasses. And this was 7 o'clock in the morning. What in the world is going on? And, you know, and... Finally, a park ranger came up to me and said, I bet you're looking for the Kalima Warbler. And I said, yeah, I am. And he said, well, come on down. And he stood me beside this guy, tall guy, direct guy, and he said, this is James Schlesinger. <laughs> James Schlesinger at that time was Secretary of Energy. He had been Secretary of Defense under Presidents Nixon and Ford. And he was an avid bird watcher. And he stood beside me, or I stood beside him, and we were looking for the Kalima Warbler. And suddenly, Mr. Schlesinger, who had a stentorian way of speaking, said, Colima, Colima, Colima. And we both got the Colima warbler, which in bird parlance is a life bird, meaning the first time we had both seen it. And he said, lifer for you? And I said, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, congratulations. We have wonderful stories we could regale you with about these birds, uh, rare birds that occur, Bill Kite, Roadside Hawk, Rose Throated Picard, um, in which um, I told Kathy she had to make up her mind whether she wanted to be a bird watcher or a photographer. Well, the rest is history. Uh, red crowned parrots that now breed in Texas, white winged doves that are now up here, uh, the prairie chicken, which is a rare bird now, almost extinct, and of course the hooping crane. We've seen them all, I've studied them all, Kathy's taking pictures of them all. Writing the book was a joy. Uh, and, of course, writing the book meant that I had been to all these places. And that was a good thing, because then we had to do a book about the back roads of Texas. <laughs> and I'll tell you about the back roads of Texas, and I hope that you enjoy it. Now, realize we're working on two commercial books at the exact same time. Gary's working full-time for Lone Star College. I'm working part-time for Lone Star College as an adjunct professor, and still working my full-time job as a full-time nature photographer, and we're working on two books, plus a nature column that comes out every Saturday for the last 18 years. So it was a little busy in our house at times. But you've got a copy of the Back Roads of Texas book as a gift, and I hope when you're reading it, you see some things that are familiar to you, like the, the, you know, the Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, which I think anybody who's driven down Interstate 20 has seen. It's now completely spray painted, by the way. Um, and then you've, uh, you've also probably seen the stock, whoa, go back, go back, go back. No, don't go forward <laughs> like that. There you go. You've probably also seen the stockyards in, in uh, uh, Fort Worth. But what I want you to see also in the Backroads books are the little towns that have really come alive through, through maximizing what their charm is. Steve Head comes from San Angelo, so I think I'll show you um, San Angelo. There, go back. San Angelo has done an amazing job updating its riverfront. So I hope as you're reading the book, you get some ideas of places you can go around Texas and see the beautiful things that small communities in Texas are doing, as well as the goofy, strange, weird stuff in Texas. 
but both of them I hope you enjoy. It was a joy to give them to you as a gift, and I hope that you enjoy them as you read through them. And by the way, if you want to travel with us, I'm commercial. <laughs> We've always got tours. Any of you all as well, you're always what welcome you're to join us. You're tell them what tours. you've been, where you've been, and uh, some of the trips that you've taken. Pardon? You're going to tell them some of the trips that you've taken. Oh, we some. We just got back from Costa Rica, taking ten people to Costa Rica, and all of our trips benefit Houston Audubon Society and their bird watchers plus photographers. Spain's coming up next year. Ecuador um, by during spring break, by the way, so all of you all can attend. And then we're going to Tanzania for a photo safari, Pantanal to see the jaguars, which is the largest wetlands in the world in, in uh, Brazil. And then um, other trips along the line include Spain, Bhutan, and um, a lot of other interesting places to go. And here's all of our contact information if you're interested. Allow me to say this, and I say this without reservation and without pandering. Uh, we have been all over the world, literally. And we've seen birds from all over the world. People often ask me, what's your favorite place to watch birds? I'll give you three guesses what the answer is, and the first two don't count. <laughs> Texas. Texas. <laughs> Kathy and I are eighth and seventh generation Texans. We wrote this book. I say, the book, Back Roads of Texas, is a labor of love, and certainly the birds of Texas is a labor of love. This is our state. We love it. You get off the back roads of Texas, and you see a land is as charming and elegant and wonderful and interesting as any place in the world we've ever been. And I say that without reservation. That's absolutely the truth. Mm -hmm. So about once or twice a year, I'll see a bird or the birds when they come through. I don't know if you remember the last one I sent you was about a year ago when the buntings, I believe, came through. Yes. They're beautiful yes. blue bird. They have a blue. When the sun hits it, it is a different color blue, something I haven't that you don't see very often. Now, now I know what they are. I pay attention to them. But So I'll send Gary an email, and he responds uh, very quickly. So if you have any questions about what you're seeing, either you can send Gary a note or you can text him at night. I'll give you his phone or Kathy. He, he's more than... <laughs> no, they're really good at what they do. I'm, it's, I'm... Respond quickly because I know who the boss is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, I respond to, uh, oh, yes, sir. Bluebird eggs. Bluebird eggs. So that's a, that's a blue thing. Bluebird eggs, yes. Bluebird eggs, yes. You can't uh -huh. see the bird, but I saw the eggs. <laughs> well, Gary, Gary knows the bird sounds. I guess Kathy does too, but because, you know, when we went over to Spring Creek or whatever it was where we yeah. went, he. Spring Creek, yeah. I thought it was his iPhone. He's got an iPhone app that does the tweets, but I couldn't tell the difference between your iPhone tweets and you. So and he sees <laughs> birds that we. That I can only hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so every ever since I got my headphone out there, I'm noticing birds. Hey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. I go, I go outside. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can help me with this one. At 5:30 to, to wait for the bus, school bus with my son, and um, every morning I hear two birds, and I. You know, I, I, I don't want to do the sounds, so but, but, you know, as a call. Give it a try. But, uh, <laughs> but it's dark. What, what, do you, what, would, what would you be your guess? Well, I'm up at 5 o'clock most mornings, too, and uh, the, mo the loudest two birds at that time of the morning are American Robins and Carolina Wrens. So that's probably what you're hearing. Probably what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gary and Kathy, <clears throat> on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Lone Star, uh, thank you for a job well thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your passion for birds in the state of Texas. And as I tell everybody that's doing good work, maintain the momentum. We shall. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Are we ready for the sabbatical winners? Okay. <clears throat> Chair Smith, member of the Boards of Trustees and Chancellor Head, I am really honored to be here tonight in place of Katie Caruso. Dr. Katie Caruso chairs the sabbatical committee. She's at a conference tonight and sends her regrets, but she asked if I could step in for her. Uh, we have a robust professional development program at Lone Star College. You've met members of the academy before. We have the Next Generation Leadership Program, LSC LEAD for our mid-level leaders, uh, LSC LEAP for our uh, support staff, our Deans and Chairs Institute, we spend about 
$750,000 a year on fee waivers and scholarships for our employees. But certainly the pinnacle program for our faculty and administrators is a sabbatical. You're eligible to apply for a sabbatical when you've worked full time at Lone Star for seven years. Um, it's a pretty rigorous process. Katie chairs the committee. The committee consists of three people from each of the colleges, two faculty members and an administrator. They serve three year terms. And this year we had 20 applications for sabbatical and 12 of them were recommended to the chancellor to go forward. And the chancellor has accepted all 12 of those recommendations. And so it is my pleasure tonight to introduce you to the sabbatical recipients for 2017-18. And I'll ask them to come up as I call their name so you can meet them. The first is Professor uh, Rich Almstead. He's a professor of kinesiology at Kingwood. And he is going to be collaborating with Dr. Rui Martins, the Vice Rector of Research for University of Macau. He's going to present lectures and mentor students in sports and work with the university basketball teams as they prepare to compete in national competitions in China. What's the name of the university again? Uh, university of Macau. Macau, OK. Thank you. Stephanie Andrews, professor of math at Kingwood, is preparing a just-in-time linked curricula that's going to add pathways for students to accelerate completion of non-algebraic, developmental, and college-level math courses. I think we want you to do like a in one six year or here, less. six yeah. there, oh, and just do a little, to. don't get too close to us, but a semicircle. <laughs> like, so yeah. you, the board can see you, so you yeah. know. Not, <laughs> I, I know all of them, so I don't mind talking. Like in a little semicircle okay. uh, block, uh, Patrick's view and Bob's fine. view right there, that'd be fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> professor Hope Lejeune is a reference librarian professor at Kingwood. She is going to pursue a certification in evidence-based health sciences librarianship to enhance her teaching and scholarship. Mari Amori is a professor of art at Kingwood. You've met Mari before, those of you who've been on the board for a long time. She's an artist who's going to use her semester for research, which will result in a traveling art exhibition at Kingwood Art Gallery, Mary Madison Parish Gallery at Montgomery, and the Williams Tower Art Gallery, Houston. Uh, the, the exhibitions will be accompanied by a video and self-published book. Professor Madeline Brogan from Montgomery is professor of accounting, and she's going to expand the number of students and community members involved in the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. From North Harris, uh, Professor Roy Hanscom is a professor of art. He's researching. He can't, couldn't be here tonight. He's teaching. Uh, he's going to be researching what is expected of a ceramic transfer student as they move to a four-year uh, degree. And he'll share the information with uh, students, faculty, and the community through lectures, demonstrations, and workshops. Also from North Harris, Professor LaShun Griffin, professor of English. She's going to author and compile a text featuring English composition and rhetoric lessons and activities with transformational charismatic leadership lessons to teach and reinforce important soft skills, um, undergird our system's mission to ultimately facilitate student success, engagement, retention, completion, and lifelong learning. Professor Barbara Haywood teaches history at Tomball. I'm sorry, Alice Savage. Let's see. Savage. Alice Savage. From, from uh, <coughs> North Harris. <laughs> I'm glad you got here, Alice. She was stuck behind the train. <laughs> She's going to create 15 to 18 low level, high interest reading texts with critical thinking and vocabulary activities, upload them to a WordPress website. I love this. The website's titled Voracious Reader. And it's going to be a resource for English language and possibly developmental studies, teachers and learnings in the system and beyond. From Tomball, Professor Barbara Hayward teaches history. And she's going to spend some time visiting BYU Hawaii and Laredo Community College to observe their methods of serving a diverse student body and write a paper about her impressions and suggestions how to adapt their practices to Lone Star's unique circumstances. Uh, Professor Catherine Olson, Kate Olson is going to collect her poems. She's a um, professor of English. And um, look for a publisher for a volume of poetry, write new poems for second volume, and also enroll in a creative writing poetry workshop, either in print or Stanford con um, continuing studies. Uh, from Tomball, Professor Irina Nuzova teaches ESOL. 
and she's going to design a new English 1301 composition and rhetoric course based on the latest research and practices in the area of second language writing that integrates traditional composition and rhetoric pedagogy with focused ESL, ESOL instruction. Uh, Professor Greg Oakes, who teaches English, couldn't be with us tonight. He's going to this. He's also uh, he's going to locate and copy from the internet at least 2,000 contemporary poems from the last 30 years, catalog them to serve the pedagog pedagogical needs of our professors and who are, I love this, who are craving new poems to teach. Uh. It's University Park. University Park, sorry. So these are our sabbatical recipients for 2017-18. I think you'll agree with me that they're, the breadth of work that they're doing is amazing. They bring so much to our college, and I'm really proud to have them as colleagues. Uh, board members, do you have any questions of any of these outstanding uh, instructors? Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring stuff back for us. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see show and tell when you come back. Yeah. Great. And I'd like to say I'm always proud of individuals that do outstanding work, especially when you want to bring it back to our kids and other instructors to make sure that Lone Star remains the premier community college in the world. Thanks for your hard work. Have fun. Have fun. Great. Thank you. Okay, the Board of Trustees, in accordance with Section 55.001 of the Texas Government Code, will move. We have one more introduction. Sorry, Miguel. Okay. Chair Smith, trustees, Chancellor Head, I'd like to introduce you to Miguel Lopez. Miguel Lopez just started with us on Monday as the new executive director for the Small Business Development Center. I'm very excited to have Miguel with us. He brings 21 years of successful experience in business, in marketing, um, in oil and gas, has spent some time as a banker. Um, and what's really impressive about Miguel is his participation and leadership in the community. I'll list some of the organizations that he has spent some time with and I'll allow him to introduce himself to you. Uh, he is a volunteer and a coach for the Special Olympics. He is the past chairman for the Montgomery County Hispanic Chamber. He serves every year on the South County 4th of July Parade Committee, um, Montgomery County March of Dimes. Uh, he's volunteered with Conroe Willis Go Texan in Oak Ridge Elementary, with EFTA, the Education for Tomorrow Alliance. And outside of that, he also spent years as a machine gunner for the United States Marine Corps. So very excited to have Miguel Lopez joining us and leading, leading the SBDC force. So. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, very uh, happy and proud to be here. Um, I look forward to uh, uh, getting the Small Business Development Center team on board. Uh, I look forward to meeting all the campus presidents and um, showcasing how we want to be partners with Lone Star College throughout the year. So very proud to be here. I've Welcome. known Miguel for a long time, and so I'm, I'm, I didn't even know you had applied for the job, and I'm very happy. As a matter of fact, I was asking Elva yesterday. She said, well, uh, we have a Hispanic advisory committee coming up, and she said, well, Miguel's going to be there. And I said, and I, uh, she said, you know, he was recently hired, which he had told me that, but I didn't know when you had started. He'd already started here, which I did not know. So I ran into him out in the parking lot last, was it last night? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you're going to like him. He's really well known in the community, and he's got a broad view of things, and I mean all the communities that we have. So glad to have you. Good so, here. Thank you. So. I want you to know that years and years ago, I, I took the entrance exam for the Marines, failed, so I had to go to the Air Force. And I <laughs> totally respect uh, the Marine Corps, and I have a long history with them. And so, uh, and the shoes you're filling are huge. Yes, sir. And I think, uh, I mean, I think we have found our man, right? Absolutely. Right? All right. Welcome. Thank you. Good beer. Thank you. Same here, Miguel. Welcome to, to Lone Star. Appreciate it. Thank you. Again, uh, the Board of Trustees, in accordance with Section 55.001 of the Texas Government Code, will move into 
closed session under one or more of the following provisions of the Act. Section 551.071, consultation with attorney. Section 551.072, deliberation regarding real property. Section 551.074, personnel matters. Section 551.076, deliberations regarding security devices. Thank you.